Hello, hello, hello. This is great calling. Yeah. Hi, I hope that you are hearing me quite well and that you can see me. So if you do, there is a chat box in uh, on the right hand side. Just say hey, and then I know that you can all hear me. Okay. Okay, good. Perfectly. Thank you for answering, Dirk. Um, great to have you here. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, this is the first time that I'm working with Webinar Jam. So I hope that everything will be okay. I just wanted to say hi. I wanted to say thank you very much for joining this webinar. Uh, we're gonna have lots of fun tonight, lots of tips, lots of tricks regarding the marketing message, etc. cetera. Um, but I'm not gonna stay here the whole time with my face on the screen because then I am a little bit distracted myself too. So I'm gonna share my screen. Ta-da, I'm good myself away poof there you have it so now that we have um, if everything is going well you should see my screen popping up very soon there okay good um well let's get started there's already four minutes um people are coming in but um well, anyway, I am, uh, I'm seeing them come in and I hope that everything will be okay. So thank you again for being here and congratulations for being here. Um, this is really great and it's uh, for the, all the people who are in Belgium, it's uh, holiday time. So great that you took the time to uh, spend with us and to um, learn everything that you need to know about the marketing message. Dus ook aan de Nederlandstalige vrienden onder ons een zeer warm welkom. Et pour les francophones, soyez les bienvenus. Now, um, you know probably Murphy's Law. Well, um, I've had my share of Murphy's Law a couple of days in the last week. Um, my uh, webinar was off um, for more than four days. My email didn't work for more than four days. So I was making some promotion for this webinar and I directed them to my webinar, uh, to my website and they couldn't register, which is really wonderful. They couldn't even send me a mail saying, well, hey, uh, it's not working. So I had my share of uh, Murphy's Law and what's even worse, apparently they have lost my database since January 2016, which means that I lost a lot of content, among others, 40 blog posts, etc. Now, I am sure that today the all the technical details will be okay and I'm pretty sure that Murphy uh, will not bother us. So fuck Murphy, we're going to have a, a big fun tonight. So that's the objective of tonight. And we're going to learn, of course, a lot. Hell yeah. Now, um, as for webinar jam, just a couple of uh, things I want to share, some practicalities. If you have difficulties um, hearing me or seeing me, just push the reconnect button on the bottom of your screen. Just reconnect. Um, webinar jam works with Google Hangouts and that means that sometimes there is a small delay. And so if that is the case, just push the uh, reconnect button on the bottom page. And then everything that, that takes a lot of resources on, on your computer and on your network, please avoid it. Uh, avoid uh, Facebook and uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, Skype, whatever. Please try to avoid it because it's taking a lot of time uh, a, a lot of resources from your website. So try to ask your family members, members also to not download any videos or stream a lot of music 
uh, we want to be concentrated. So also um, for your uh, sake, please leave your mobile phone on the on the side because you want to be concentrated. Grab some a pen and paper because you're going to get a lot of information. So you don't want to miss anything. So please do get your pen and paper so that you can write down everything that you need to know about do the compelling marketing message and how to wow, wow your audience. Okay, now as for questions, you are, uh, you can ask questions, a lot of questions. I love questions um, and I promise you that I will handle them at the end. So you've got a chat box on the right hand side of your screen. There you can type in the questions that you have or the remarks that you have. Um, I'm alone tonight, so my virtual assistant is not present, so I'll try to, um, to follow up with the questions, but it's easier if I do that at the end of our, um, of our training. Okay, great. Let's get a move on. So, we're going to talk about three major things to, tonight. Um, well, it all has to do with the marketing message, of course, and we're going to talk about what and why. So what is it and why should we even bother? The second one is the seven steps. Well, I promised you seven steps to wow your audience. So that's what we're going to cover too. And I've got some bonus tips for you at the end of our training. So please hang with me. Hang on, just stay with us until the end of the training because you are going to get lots of great stuff, I promise you. Now, who am I? I see that there are a few people that I already know, but there are also a lot of people that I do not know so well, so maybe you do not know about me either. So I'm going to be very quickly about that. I'm just going to send you this beautiful photo. Um, it's when I was about 13 years old and um, my question to you guys is, where am I? You can, can you imagine who I am? When I show this photo um, to a live audience in a live workshop, they always tend to say, yeah, it's the girl and, uh, on the left behind there in the back, uh, the back row. And then somebody else says, no, it's the girl with the pink pants or whatever. Well, the last one, the pink pants, that's, uh, that's my sister, actually, Catherine. And the lady uh, or the girl that's me is actually there. And um, that photo and typically me there is so typical um, about myself, how I used to be as a child and as a teenager. I was a very introverted, shy girl. I really did not feel um, good about myself. I was not at all popular, so I was really trying to hide. Um, I was a girl who tried to be invisible because I was very afraid that people wouldn't make nasty comments on my looks, etc. So I was a very introverted uh, little girl. Now, after a while, I said, well, that's not working very well. So I became the really uh, annoying little girl. So I was the one who was always blaming and complaining and being negative. That all had to do, of course, with the fact that I was not happy with how, how I felt, how I uh, looked. I felt I was ugly and uh, fat and everything. So that resulted in a behavior that was really not really great. And then one day, um, my father and my sister, the people I loved the most uh, back then and still now, they one day said to me, do you know how awful person that you are? You're always complaining you, um, about the weather, about um, the bread that's not fresh, about the bus that's too late, etc. So you're always complaining and being negative all the time. It's actually no fun to be with you. And I did not have any clue that I was such a pain in the ass. So those two, those two people really put a, a mirror in front of my face and they said, you are a negative person and really a pain to be with. And that for me was extremely surprising. I wasn't even aware of that. 
But it was a very important day of my life and I decided that I couldn't go on like that. I mean, I was indeed be, not being happy and being negative, etc. And I said that day, I'm going to be a positive person. So when Murphy comes along, I try to be a positive person. I want to make a positive difference in people like in people's life. I want to be a positive person and inspire people uh, to um, yeah to grow and to um, yeah to be able to able to evolve. And that's what happened to me too. Little by little, I became more positive. I looked at the positive things in life, and I attracted more positive opportunities in my life, in my business life. I attracted more positive people, like my husband, etc. And I became a really um, happy person, actually, and a positive uh, person with lots of energy and who is visible, because it is important to be visible if you want um, to. Yeah, to to make it in life and certainly in professional life, but that takes a lot of um, courage and a lot of energy, especially for an introverted person as uh, like I am. And uh, but it worked. So my mission today is that I wanna enthuse and inspire entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs to grow and never be small again. So that's really my mission. I didn't want to be small anymore and for those who don't want to be small anymore uh, and who want to grow in that professional life and in as a person, well, I am there to help you. Now, how I do that? Well, that is via personal branding. Now, today, this is where I am. Um, I have my two companies, HR5 and You Brand Builder. HR5 is in HR, um, HR consultancy, and You Brand Builder is, of course, the company that is focused on personal branding. So today, I claim uh, to be a, a personal branding expert. So two companies, that's lots of work, um, but besides that, I tend to give a lot of attention to the private things in life too, to my family, like my godchild Charlotte, whom you see there, um, my two dogs, my husband with whom I've been married for 16 years already. And I do love to shop and drink a glass of good wine, read a good book. And there is one thing that's one my motto that is very important. And that is don't take yourself too seriously. I mean, our jobs are serious and our businesses are serious, but don't take yourself too seriously. So that's enough about me. I just wanted to give you that little bit of background so that you know who I am and where I came from. Some people think that I'm a very extroverted person who doesn't uh, like anything but uh, being very visible and shooting videos, etc. But that has not always been the case. And anyway, for me, it's a means to achieve my mission, my mission to help other people grow and never be small again. Now, I'm telling you all about personal branding. So what is personal branding actually about? This is not a training on personal branding, but I should spend a, a minute or two on the concept of personal branding because I still feel that there are quite some people who do not know what it is uh, and there are quite some misunderstandings. Now, um, the major thing that I want to say is Personal branding is a means, it's not a goal as such, and that is very important. So it is a means to achieve your ambitions, to achieve your goals, to possibly solve all your problems. And the means, the, the, what, what we mean with uh, personal branding is that it is a way to build a reputation, to become the go-to person in your field, and to stand out from the crowd. It's really all about showing how unique you are and how you can help your target audience solve their problems. It's uh, building that reputation, it's becoming more visible by being yourself, by being authentic. So in that world, you see a couple of uh, important words that are related to uh, personal branding. Now, when we think about personal brands, we think about people like these girls and guys here. Um, I mean, these are uh, these are obviously people who have built their personal brand. I mean, Richard Branson, well, the, and and Virgin, you can't separate them from each other. 
when you look at uh, Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, um, he has also created a pers strong personal brand. I mean, he even has buildings named after him. So honestly, and Hudela, for instance, for the Belgian people, um, well, she had her own magazine, etc. So also, and she too has her own personal brand. Now you might say, well, hey, I don't want to be be a celebrity like those people that you are showing there on the screen. And I do understand that. I don't want to be that either. But the idea with personal branding is that you become the celebrity in your field, that you become the go-to person in your field. So that, that your potential client or your intern, internal client seeks you out instead of the competition. So that is really the idea. Now, um, if you want to be good at that, you need to start with yourself. That's the first step in my personal branding uh, program. And you start with your marketing message. That's the basics of personal branding. I mean, if you want to attract more clients and leads, if you want to uh, your potential client to look out for you, to notice you and to work with you and to possibly buy from you, well, then that person, that potential client needs to know about you. That means that you have to be visible and that that person, that potential client needs to know what is it that you do? What is the service that you deliver? Can you do something for him or her or not? So that is why your marketing message is really the basics of everything. It's the answer to what is it really that you do in your job or in your business? Um, but what is it that you do? And um, that's why I think it's so important to talk about a marketing message. And that's why I think it's important to have this training now, why do you need a marketing message? Well, um, to wow your audience, of course. Eh? So your audience, your target audience might be your potential client, might be the, the CEO of a company you want to work for or whatever, but you want to attract these people and you want to wow them with a good message that compels, a good message that really attracts these people. Now, if you want more um, reasons why, I'm going to give you some. It's a way to inspire people. If you have a good, strong message, then people will be inspired. They will listen to you. Um, I often go to networking events and I meet a lot of people um, whose marketing message and elevator pitch are pretty boring and pretty short. And that's a shame because then you don't feel like listening to them if you are not uh, the listening type. Or maybe uh, people have a message that is way too long and that's also a pity. So if you have the right marketing message that is compelling, then people will listen to you. They will start to know, like and trust you. That's what is the basics of, uh, of building that reputation. People will only buy from you if they know you, they like you and they trust you. Um, they won't buy from you if they do not trust you. So. Um, Having that good message will be able uh, will enable you to um, make them know, like, and trust you. It will make them buy from you. You make them become your greatest fan and your ambassador. You will stand out from the competition, which is of course important. And you will be able to build your personal brand and business if you got the basics right. If you got that marketing message right. And yeah, well, that's my tagline. You will get noticed, attract clients and enjoy freedom, financial freedom. And that's why, that is why you should have your marketing message. Now, excuse my French, but fuck it, let's do it. We are going to have some fun and we are going to talk about this, these seven steps to wow your audience. Unfortunately, this is a uh, online session and so I can't see you. And it's always a little bit more difficult um, uh, to really have interaction uh, with you guys. So it is a little bit of a monologue this time. It's also because I am learning to work with this new system. So bear with me. I'm going to give you a lot of information. Have your pen and paper ready because if you write it down, if you listen very well, then you will keep it in mind and hopefully remember it when you can use it. 
Okay, well, let's cover the seven steps to wow your audience. Step one. The first step when you craft your marketing message is really a basic step. I mean, you can't get it more basic than that. But it's really what is it that you do? I mean, before you can really start talking about your business, about your job, you need to know what is it that you do. Now, I often get reactions um, from people like uh, who are coach. So when I ask, okay, what is it that you do? Then they, they say to me, well, I'm a coach. And then I wonder what kind of coach are you? Are you a weight loss coach? Or are you a football coach or a burnout coach or a life coach? I mean, just answering coach doesn't say really what it is that you do. So uh, when you thought, okay, it's really basic that first step, it's not that basic as such because you need to go a little bit deeper than just that once than one word, I'm a coach or I'm a consultant or I'm in sales. I mean, go a little bit more deeper and figure out what is it really that you do? What are the services that you deliver? Now, um, the way to do that is to go and find out what is it that you are good at? Uh, what are your strengths? Because it's easier to build your brand and your business and your brand um, on your strengths. So try to find out what are really your strengths and possibly make your own swaps. I mean, uh, what are my strengths? What are possibly my weaknesses? What are the opportunities and what are the threats? Um, imagine that you are an, um, an HR manager, um, an HR interim manager, then you might have certain um, strengths like you are very good in communication, you know the labor law very well, you have a very good background and experience with um, the unions, etc. So those are, might be your strengths, but maybe your weakness is that you don't speak any English. Um, and then look at the threats and the opportunities. The opportunities might be that the, the economy is growing and so they need more people like you. But the threat might be that you can't um, stand out from the competition because it is very difficult uh, to stand out if you don't know your marketing message, for instance. So that is your own uh, SWOT analysis. Try to make it yourself and try to ask others also um, to make a SWOT analysis for you. Now, another great question to ask uh, your clients potentially or other people who know you pretty well is what makes me so awesome? So ask around and you can you will figure out what the reactions will be. And, and then it's really having a look. What's my own perception and what is the perception of others? So compare it. But the main thing is that it is very very obvious that before you can even start talking about a marketing message is that you have to know what is it that you do. Now I'm going to give you um, seven steps and in each step I will give a very concrete example, uh, the story of Mary. So uh, this is Mary uh, that you see on the screen and uh, meet Mary, she's a weight loss coach, weight loss coach. So um, that is her first step. Hi, I am Mary and I'm a weight loss coach. So that is what she does. I mean, she is a weight loss coach, so she helps people lose weight. Okay, I'm just gonna drink a little bit of water here. Now that brings us to the next step. Once that you know what you want to offer and what you're good at, etc. Um, we're going to the next step and we want to know who is your target audience. I mean, if you're looking for a job, your target audience might be the recruiter in the, in a company that you want to work for or the CEO of that company. If you are a business owner, like most of the people who are attending this training, well, these people are possibly um, looking for new clients. So who is your target audience? Now, there are a lot of myths out there. There are a lot of marketing gurus who claim um, or yeah, who say certain things. And I think it's all rubbish. And I'm going to cover three of these myths. 
uh, with you so that you can forget about them ever after. The first one is the myth of the niche. The myth of the niche is some, uh, a lot of marketing uh, gurus actually say that you need to have a very, very focused target audience. It has to be very, very focused, very, very small. Um, now, what I say about that is that it's rubbish because if you look at, for instance, um, Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins, the, yeah, the motivational speaker slash guru, whatever, he, he talks to everyone. Um, my favorite um, coach is Brandon Bouchard and he too, he talks to everyone. So it is not necessary to really focus on this very, very small target audience. So you shouldn't believe everything that you uh, read in uh, the marketing books. Now, this being said, um, you want to stand out from the crowd with your marketing message and with your brand. And that is very difficult if you try to do everything for everybody. So um, it is easier for, for communication and branding purposes and marketing purposes if you do focus a little on a certain, certain target audience or a certain service that you deliver. And possibly you can combine both. But if you try to do everything for everyone, then that will be very difficult. I'm not saying that you need to have a target audience that is extremely small, but it is just a little bit more easy in communication and branding, um, branding wise. Now, the second myth is the one of the avatar. Um, if you have attended a couple of trainings in, in, in these kinds of uh, uh, areas, then they will probably um, talk to Browse, have talked about um, the avatar. And the avatar is uh, a description of the person of your ideal client. And they, these marketing gurus tend to say that you have to go in extreme detail. So your ideal client might be um, Tom, who is a married father who has three kids, who loves to um play soccer and who works uh, in a big bank who works part-time he on saturday he washes his car and he goes uh to buy the groceries in uh, a small shop nearby etc 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 so this is something that some of these marketing gurus claim that you should do. Make a very clear picture of your avatar, of your potential um, client. Now you can do that, but I don't like it. Um, I think it's too much in detail. And for me, that doesn't work. So if you want to do it and for, if it works for you, just go ahead. But I uh, prefer not doing that. What I do believe is very important is that you have to understand and know your target audience, that you have to kind of like them um, and, and possibly they might be the younger you. I mean, you had certain problems in the past, uh, now you solve them, you want to teach others how to solve these same problems. Well, your younger you might be your uh, potential client if you get what I mean. Now, um, so that is what I wanted to um, to say about this um, about this target audience and the myth of the avatar. And then the last myth is the the myth of I've made a choice and so I can never change anymore. Uh, also, this is rubbish. Um, it's it doesn't mean if if you choose one target audience or one niche, of, uh, as, as a matter of speaking, uh, that doesn't mean that you can no longer. Uh, change that afterwards. I mean, look at myself. When I started you, Brand Builder, I thought I was going to work mainly with entry managers and coaches. And that is the case. But actually, the major part of my clients are people who are already successful and want to move their business uh, uh, to the next step instead of the coaches and the entry managers who are struggling. And I thought that I would have worked more with the coaches and the interim managers who are struggling, which is not really the case. My clients are successful and want to become even more successful. So you see that has changed also. And then on the other side, 
As I have a background in human resources, I have a pretty large network in human resources. So there are quite some HR directors, etc., who contact me to give keynotes and workshops in company on personal branding to their teams, uh, to the management, etc. So it's possible. It's not really my target audience as such, but that doesn't mean that it cannot change and it doesn't mean that I have to say no to everything. So it's really, um, it, it really depends and I can help you identify that if you want, but that's for some other point. Now, when we, took, when we look at Mary, remember she's the weight loss coach and actually um, Mary has been um, uh, a lady who has tried to combine her busy job with a private life and she has two children and she's found out actually that combining these two is very hard so uh, it takes up all her time and so she doesn't have any time anymore to go to the gym or to cook healthy food etc so she goes often for the hamburgers uh, etc until a certain moment that she has discovered a secret formula that helped her eat well and do some sport and lose a lot of weight without uh, having to spend a lot of time and effort on it. And she wants to use that, um, that secret formula um, to help other busy women lose weight. So that's a little bit her story. So her target audience are the busy ladies who try to combine a busy professional life with a family and a healthy lifestyle. So these busy ladies, this, this is really her target audience and she wants to help them lose weight thanks to her secret formula. So that is the story of Mary step two. Let's continue with step three. So we know that what we want to do, we know what our target audience is. And for some people that take some time, but okay, um, it is an important step. Now step three is, what problems do you solve? I mean, you know, uh, I've already mentioned that it is important that you know your target audience, that you kind of like them, um, that you understand uh, their problem, their problems, their ambitions, etc. So the third step is really identifying what are the main problems of my target audience and, and can I solve them? So that is very important to you. I meet a lot of people when they tell me what they do, they tell me what they do, but they do not tell me what problems they solve. And there is a big difference there. Is focusing on the problems that you can solve thanks to your service in step one. Now, how to do that? Well, you have to identify their problems. You have to identify their ambitions. Ask around, ask your target audience, what are the struggle, what are they struggling with? What are their dreams and hopes, etc.? And what do they really want, but really want? And that word want is a very important word. I always say uh, that you should ask the question, so what? It's the so what technique. Um, because when people tell me in, in a marketing message or an elevator pitch and they say, um, yeah, well, I, uh, I help other people build their personal brand. Now let's take my own example here. Huh? So I help uh, people build their personal brand then your question to me might say, might be, so what? Okay, when I help them build their personal brand, they will be able to stand out from the competition. And then you can ask again, so what? Well, if they can stand out from the competition, they will get noticed by their potential clients. So what? They can, uh, then they can sell their services to these clients. So what? They have more income. So what? They can uh, live a better life have less more worries and have more peace of mind. So you see this technique of so what is very important to identify the real problems that people are facing and um, the underlying problems, because that is very important that you tackle these problems in your marketing message. When you bring your message 
whether it's on your website, on your LinkedIn profile or face-to-face, -face, it should talk about the problems that you solve. And these problems are often related to uh, things like happiness, security, love, power, control, peace of mind, freedom, free time, status, etc. So people are not buying my program because of, uh, of the fact that I'm giving four live days in, in six months and it is a group, etc. They are buying it because they believe that they can attract more clients and live a happy and rich life, for instance. So that is what they are looking for. So that, that is what they want. Very important, um, very important aspect of that marketing message. So focus on the problems that you can solve with your service and the underlying problems. There is a big difference between um, yeah, the want and the need, and I'll come back to that. Now, what problems do you solve? It's very important that you say what's in it for them and that you do not talk solely about what you do. So it's not that you are a weight loss coach, but you, you help them lose weight so that they can live a happier life, for instance. You probably know um, another good example is, and it's, it's a common example in, in, this, um, in this marketing message world, if I may say so, in the marketing world, it's about the drills. Uh, so imagine that you are Gamma and you sell drills uh, to make holes in the wall. Now, actually, you do not sell drills, or yeah, you do, but people are not buying the drill. They are buying the holes in the wall, if you get what I mean. So imagine that um, you, your daughter has made a beautiful painting. She's very artistic and you love the painting that she made and you want to hang it up on the wall. Now, what you need is a plug and a hole and then you can put that uh, painting on the wall. So you want that hole. Now, if you go to Gamma, you need to buy a drill to make that hole. So what, it, what is it that you want? Well, you want a hole instead of the drill, if you get what I mean. So it's a very important uh, distinction to make, especially if you are crafting your marketing message. And what is also very important is what's in it for them. I mean, if that, uh, if the, the sales guy in the Gamma starts to talk about all the, the drills and all the possibilities and all the technical stuff, et cetera, and you are only interested in the whole, then his communication and his manager, manage, uh, message, sorry, is totally wasted. So always remember to think about what's in it for them don't talk about what is it, what it is that you do but remember what's in it for them what are the problems that you can solve now when we look back at um, at our friend mary well she she helps these these ladies these busy ladies lose weight so that they will feel happy and healthy and sexy again that is what they want they don't particularly want to go on a diet or to the gym uh, or even not particularly want to lose weight. They really want to lose weight because they want to feel comfortable again with their girlfriends on the restaurant. They want to feel good when they go shopping and they don't want to uh, have to buy everything online, all their clothes online because they're so scared to go into a shop. So um, that is what they want. That is what they are looking for. And that is what Mary should sell or tell in her marketing message. Okay, let's go to number four. So we know what we do. We know what our target audience is. We know what problems we can solve. Now, the next question is, of course, what is your solution? What's the solution to your problem? And there we have a big difference between what it is that they want and what they need. I'm going to give you a very concrete example again. Um, we, we'll take my example again. Um, let's say that my clients want to make a very good and everlasting positive impression at networking events. 
Now that is what they want. They want to make a good impression so that people get back to them so that they can sell their services and, and make a good living, etc. So that is what they want. Now, what do they need? Well, actually they need my training and marketing messages. I can teach them how to craft a, ma craft a market message, a marketing message and how to bring it in an enthusiastic way so that people want to listen. So that is what they need. Um, but in my messages, in my communication, in my promotion, etc., I will focus a lot on the good impression that they can make at networking events so that they can attract more clients, etc., etc. Um, so that's the, the, the difference between the want and the need. If you go to the weight loss coaches again, um, people want to lose weight because they want to feel happier again and, and comfortable, etc. What they need is some weight loss program. But if you just talk about a weight loss program, if you do only the PR and the, and the advertising on the weight loss program, program, you will not be able to attract so much um, potential clients as when you really talk the language of your customer, of your potential clients, talk the language of what they want. Okay, I think I made my point here. Now, a second thing that is very important um, and that is related to that is when you talk about the solution that you can offer to these um, people and to their problems, you should focus on the results and the benefits. And also this is an, uh, a mistake that lots of people tend to make. People tend to make, uh, tend to focus still too much on the features. Um, the typical example is of course, when you look at, um, at the garage where you can buy a car, um, you can buy a car and you can focus the whole time, the seller can buy and focus the whole time on all the features. It has uh, so much um, horsepower and it can uh, go so fast and or it's very safe or there are so many people that can fit into that, etc. But those are all the features. But actually what you want is focus on the results and the benefit. What results can you promise uh, and what benefit can you promise with this car? I mean, that person uh, will be able to drive safely with family in his car. That is a result and he will have that peace of mind, for instance. That is the result or the benefit that you focus on. Um, Another example is, uh, is my training, for instance, my, my live training of the marketing message. I'm going to talk about that in a couple of uh, minutes, but I could go on and on about the fact that it is a live training, that it is a small group, that it is in Antwerp, that I will be there next to you crafting your message, whether it's in Dutch or English or French. Um, but that's not really that important. What we should be focusing on is the fact that you will have a compelling marketing message, that you will uh, be able to attract more people who will listen to you and become your fans and ambassadors, etc. So that is the result that those are the benefits that I promise. And that is what I should be looking for or focusing on instead of the features. So when you yourself you go and talk to uh, the people about your service, about the products, think about what's in it for them, what are the results that I can promise them, or what are the benefits that I can give or that they can get thanks to my solution. Now, when we go back to our friend Mary, well, um, we know that she's a weight loss coach and that she wants to work with these busy uh, women who don't have enough, uh, a lot of time. Now, what she has uh, found out is that secret formula and the results that she promised um, with that secret formula is that they, that these ladies will be having a good health, a happy family, more energy and all this without having to spend uh, a lot of time on achieving that. So that is her solution. It's uh, that is her focus on the results. Okay, that was step five, uh, four. Sorry, let's go to step number five. First, first step was what is it that you do? Second is what, who's your target audience? Third one is who's your uh, What are the problems that you solve? The fourth one is and how do you solve it? The Fifth one is, and what makes you unique? 
because you want to stand out from the competition, you want to be unique, you want to be remembered. Now, how can you do that? Now, a good news is that you are unique, whatever you do. So uh, there's only one you, uh, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. That's what Oscar Wilde said. So that's the good news. Now, it's not so easy to be unique. Um, so I'm just going to give you a couple of, um, a couple of tips um that's typically interesting for the service oriented world um but if we could get our heads together i'm sure that i come uh, that i can come up with unique ideas for you too now um and uh, one of the the good ways to be unique is to craft your own signature system uh, to make your own or invent your own signature system like for instance my brand system so B-R-A-N-D, that's my signature system. That's, uh, these are the five steps, B-R-A-N-D, five steps that you have to go to if you want to build your personal brand. Five easy steps. If you, by the way, if you are interested in that, just go to my website, yourbrandbuilder.com and you can find the ebook where I uh, explain everything in detail. Now that is an example. Um, if you have your own signature system, it might be like the five steps and with, a, with a nice name attached to it, or it might be a certain concept that you have invented. Um, it, it has to be something that is typically you and that people will remember and that will be like, um, uh, how to say that in English, a kapstok in Dutch. Um, so, so that is one way to be unique, to have your own signature system and to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it so people know at the end that you are the brand lady, for instance. Now, another thing that you can do is look at the feature and make a big deal of it. You know that I, in the previous uh, step, I said that we should focus on the results and the benefit and not on the features, unless there is one feature that, um, that, that you can make a big deal of it. Um, <clears throat> for instance, there is this organization of, um, of ladies, the Strafe Madame uh, here in, uh, in Belgium, and they went to New York for a 72 hour reload. I mean, it's a bunch of ladies and together uh, they went to, to New York to well, to, to learn from each other, to, to learn new things, etc., etc., and to reload. Now, the New York fact is actually a feature and normally not that important. Huh? For instance, my training will be in Antwerp region. I don't even know yet where it will be Antwerp region, but that's not important. Now, here in this case, with the stuff of Madame, the New York aspect is, of course, a very important uh, feature, and they made a big deal of it. So you see it. Um, another tip that you can do is um, you go to the competition, you look at the competition and you do something completely differently. Um, I attended quite some trainings with uh, Nissan Deneta from Open Circles and he had this uh, concept of the business bootcamp. And in the business, the business bootcamp is actually two day training for free where he invited thousands and thousands of people and indeed 2000 people showed up and it's a marketing training really but it's completely different with what everybody else does because the other marketing trainings are in small groups it's not at all for free um it's uh, uh it's longer it's in the week uh, often whereas for the business bootcamp it was in the weekend etc etc so they made something they did something completely different and that way they were able to stand out and be unique. And then the last tip that I can give you here is take the best service of the competition and offer it for free. So I love that one. I should do, try that one uh, too uh, one day. Um, but for instance, one of my friends is Cindy Franken from Mega Cindy. And she, so she's all into sales. Uh, she uh, sells, well, she learns people, or, um, entrepreneurs to sell. And she has an online program for that. Now, uh, what she's going to do is she, she knows that, it, that the competition um, earns a lot of money by selling their connective selling programs. 
and uh, like bait and, and etc. And uh, they are pretty expensive, these programs. Now, Cindy has decided, well, I'm going to give it away for free. Half, and that makes her unique, of course. So, yeah, see what happens. So, I, just another, uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of ideas that I gave you, how could, you can make yourself or your service somewhat more unique. Now, as for our friend uh, Mary, well, I already said that she had this magic formula uh, and she has her own um, signature system, which is called Mary, M-A-R-Y. And uh, her, her magic formula has everything to do with the mindset. Eh? As a businesswoman, you have to have the right mindset. You have to block time in your agenda to go to the gym. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of beautiful, uh, very tasty and light recipes. And we're going to focus on yoga. This is something, of course, that I made up. But that might be her signature system, her secret formula that she could uh, possibly use to make her stand out from the competition. Sixth step, a very important one too, is why. Why are you doing the things that you do? We already know why, uh, what you are doing, for whom, whom you're helping, with what kind of solution and why it is unique and different. But why uh, is it so important for you, uh, you as a person? Why do you give a damn and why should we give a damn? And here we really make it personal. We really make that emotional connection. We really build your story. And that is an important one because people buy from people and people love stories and people want to know more than just the rational facts and figures. So that is why your purpose, your why, your mission is also, and, and your story really is also something that you could um, try to um, add to your marketing message. And I advise you to do that. I mean, why are you doing the things that you, that you do? What is your purpose? Um, it creates an emotional connection, as I've already um, said. It makes it personal it, and you tell your story. To make it a little bit more concrete with our friend Mary again, well, she's been there. I mean, she wants to help all these business women who are so busy and who feel ugly and fat and whatever. Now she's been there too. And she had that terrible um, experience too, until one day um, she had almost a heart attack. She went to the doctor and the doctor said that um, if she went on like this, that she wouldn't be able to see her daughters grow up. So that was for her the big mirror, the big eye opener. She went one week to Bali on a retreat, a detox, etc. And there she found out that there was a magic formula. She took that home. She worked on that formula. She tried it out, improved it, etc. And uh, she's lost lots and lots of weight. And that's her story, really. And her friends saw that she was losing so much weight. Yeah, the easy way and they wanted to know about it and she decided one day well if everybody wants to know about it why shouldn't I create a company really focus on that voila so that is just the story of Mary and if you can really use that story in the whole marketing message it makes it more personal it makes it more real you will be able to build more a, a connection with your target audience and um, people will be more tended to, um, to buy from you, really. So that is um, the sixth step is why you do all that. Brings us to step number seven. And this last step, well, actually, it's not the last step. I have a, a, uh, an extra bonus. But the, the step number seven is bring it with passion and enthusiasm. Uh, and that enthusiasm has to be very obvious in all your written texts. Um, so on your LinkedIn profile and your website, etc. So, but uh, it is clear that also when you bring it in public speaking, when you give a training, when you talk about what you do at networking events, bring it with passion and enthusiasm. Um, if you saw one of my little videos that I shot a couple of weeks ago, 
um, than you already know this story, but I recently um, met a lady uh, at, a, at an event and I, will, and I asked her, oh, what is it that you do? I can't help it. I think it's, it's just uh, me, but I always want to know what people do. And I asked her, what is it that, we, that you do? And she said, well, I'm into sales. And that's it. She looked away. She was not at all passionate or energetic about it. And it was clear that she was actually not very happy in her job. Or if it wasn't clear, well, it was my perception anyway. So that was not br brought in a very enthusiastic and passionate way. So I, I'm assuming that she's not very happy. And I was wondering, she's into sales. So what is she selling? Um, she never told me, and I guess she didn't sell that much, not if she is also that enthusiastic when she tries to sell stuff. Now, and that's, that's a pity because it's obvious that that, that lady is not, not uh, very happy and I am not at all intend, inclined to buy something from her um, and God knows what she's selling. Now, in the, how can you bring it in a passionate and enthusiastic way? Well, just practice and, and record yourself on video, ask for feedback from other people, smile. And very important one is believe, believe in your message, believe in the things that you have to say to others. Um, believe in, in, in your mission, in your purpose, and, and believe in the fact that you can really help others solve their problems thanks to your solution. So have a, a helping attitude and ask a copywriter to look at it. It's really simple as that, you know. Uh, ask a copywriter, ask somebody for feedback, whether it's uh, a, an oral communication or a written communication. Ask for feedback, ask for your potential clients or former clients what they think of it, whether it is it's brought in a compelling way, whether they feel like listening, etc. Voila, that was seven steps, but I promised you an eight step, a little bonus step. Um, that is the call to action. Um, especially when you are at networking events, when you talk about the things that you do, when you have your little elevator pitch, what I always try to uh, suggest is that you have your little call to action. In other, word, in other words, you ask a question at the end of your, um, of your elevator speech uh, or you make them do something. Because when you do that, then they have to think about something or they have to do something and that will enable uh, you to make it more uh, remarkable and people will be more inclined to remember you. So that is why I like the call to action. It's not always possible, but try to think about it. So if you talk about, um, I could, for instance, if I talk about uh, finding more clients, thanks to personal branding, etc., I could possibly ask a question. Do you know um, somebody who might benefit from more clients or who has a lack of clients, for instance, or who feels that he's not uh, not really making a difference with, compared to the competition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's a question that I could ask, and then people have to think about people who need more clients or who want to stand out, etc. So that is a call to action. That's the extra bonus step. Now, as for Mary's marketing message, um, I'm going to give you the the whole marketing message. Um, related to the eight steps that we just figured out. And I'm also going to give you the 10 bonus tips. But first, I just wanted to touch uh, upon a very short, um, uh, a sh short piece on my training that I'm giving on December the 13th, because actually you can have a compelling message uh, this December 13th. I'm giving a training and it is... Um, you can find it on uh, my website, gredebunners.com or ubrandbuilder.com slash your success story. Now, um, <coughs> sorry. Now you can also find some more information on uh, the right hand side. Uh, if everything goes well and, it's, and, and the technical details are, uh, are okay. Okay, now what I wanted to say about this, uh, this little training is that you can, you can learn it too. And the, the, actually, uh, the only thing that you need to do is, well, just um, 
pay the ticket and we will do the rest. I mean, uh, you just, we pay for the location, we pay for the lunches and the bubbles, of course. We pay for the coffee and the snacks and uh, we pay for the custom made workbook, of course. And you, you will walk away with your compelling marketing message done, your unique selling proposition. So what makes you unique, you will find out that day. We will have your elevator pitch done and your SWOT analysis done. You will have a good view on what is your brand statement. It will be done. You will have your story, your own story done and your LinkedIn headline, which is also very important in our businesses done. And your presentation skills will get a major boost. So if you are interested uh, in that, then please do look further. And whether you speak English or French or Dutch, it will be done for you and with you. That day I will be there to craft together with you your marketing message, if that is something that interests you. So if you want that, just on the right hand side of your screen, you see the one day live training. If you push the button I want in, you can fill out your details um, and then you can sign up. Now, what you will, uh, what will happen before that live training is that you get a lifetime access to the video series, personal branding from A to Z. That's a value of 497 euros and you get it for free. Um, so it's 26 plus one bonus video. And there you learn everything that you need to know about personal branding is from A to Z. You also get a preparation video and a preparation workbook. On that live day, it is clear that we're going to cover the marketing message, the USP, the elevator pitch, the SWOT, the brand statement, the story, the LinkedIn headline and the practical presentation skills. Um, and whether it's in Netherlands, Le Français or English, uh, it's in a small group of like-minded people and I'm going to be there and craft it together with you and for you. And after the live training, you get one personal follow-up call of 30 minutes. Uh, with me to see that everything is really drafted out and that there are no extra questions anymore. So if you're in, it's a small group. There are three spots left. I want a small group. Otherwise, I can't be, uh, I'm not able to help you all craft your marketing messages. Um, the full price is 297 euros. Um, but there is a special price if you sign up today. You've got three hours to sign up if you use the code webinar then um, then you can sign up and you get a special discount. So um, it's 247 ex uh, exclusive VAT. So um, you will see the price with VAT on your screen if you want in. Now it's satisfaction guaranteed because if uh, at a certain moment you say, oh my God, I made a mistake. Uh, and even in the beginning of the day of the day of the training, um, if after a couple of hours you say, this is really not my stuff, then you can leave the room and you get all your money back. So that's, yeah, it's really satisfaction guaranteed and yeah, you can't lose anything. So yeah, do sign up before um, 12 o'clock tonight and enjoy the special prize. Now I promised you market, uh, Mary's marketing message. Um, so this could be Mary's marketing message and this could be something that you could craft for yourself too. So, hi, I'm Mary and um, I help busy, overworked women feel good, happy and healthy again. I meet a lot of business women who work very hard to grow their careers and try to combine this with a happy family life. But the result is that most of them are stressed out, have a poor health and in the end of the day, they don't feel very happy. And I used to be that way too. I was always running from one client to another, pleasing the bosses, trying to please my husband and be there for the children. And, and I tried, uh, I tried a new diet, but it didn't work and I gained weight. I tried to go to the gym two sessions and I gave up. There was just no time nor energy for healthy food and sports. So I gained more than 30 kilos after the birth of my second daughter, which made me depressed. I was feeling fat. I was feeling un, uh, unhappy, etc. But actually it all changed when I had a heart failure and my daughter told me I would never see my children grow up um, if I kept on living that way. So that day I decided to go to Bali one week, me time, detox, healthy. 
And that is where I discovered the magic formula. I tried it and proved it. I tested it and improved it again and it works. In the meanwhile, I've helped hundreds of women lose weight without them having to go to the gym or on a difficult diet. The secret is my Mary formula. And my clients love the fact that my recipes are simple and cheap. They don't have to leave the door for that 20 minute workout. And they have a coach mentor who watches over them, who is there to encourage them with a motivational message, who is their sounding board and keeps them on track via daily simple tasks. There are other good weight loss coaches out there, but nobody has this proven system combined with a daily individual coaching. Now, do you know women who might benefit from my services? So this is Mary's marketing message. It's clear that it's not a marketing message that you say at an, uh, at an uh, networking event because it, sh it should be very uh, much shorter, but this could be the basics, for instance, of her website. And it's a basics, if once you have that basics, then you can figure out, okay, this is the long marketing message. What are the things that I can pull out to make my headline, my LinkedIn headline? What are the focus, what is the focus that I could uh, use for my elevator pitch, for my unique selling proposition, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, just to give you an idea there. Now, I also gave, promised you 10 bonus tips. Very important, make it simple. People tend to put other people in little boxes and if it's too complicated, they don't feel um, easy, they don't understand it, they will have difficulties telling what it is that you do and they won't. So, and they won't remember you either. So make it simple. Build a relationship and remember the em that emotional connection with your story that you can build. Make it personal, same thing with the story. Um, add a call to action, so that question that you could possibly add at the end of your elevator pitch. Don't forget to constantly ask yourself what's in it for them. Tell your story. Don't be afraid to be visible online and offline. If you want your potential client to notice you, to buy from you, then you have to know who you are, what it is that you do, and you have to show them. If you don't show them, they won't be able to do that. They, if you are not visible, they will not be able to find you. They will go to the competition. Be yourself, be very attentive also, and have a very good look at how people react to your message ask feedback and follow up. So these are uh, 10 very important tips that I want to give you. And by the way, have fun with it. Remember, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't try to over exercise or practice, sorry, practice in a way that it's not rolling off the tongue, that it, it becomes like some rehearsed piece learn by heart or something just go with the flow don't take yourself too seriously and have fun with it okay your turn i think i've spoken uh, for more than one hour i really would like to thank you and i'm gonna have a look at the questions if there are any questions that um that you have asked me Okay. Um, okay, so this is uh, question time, people. So uh, in the right hand side box, you can put your question or your remark um, in that chat box. And um, if I do not, uh, there is also a delay, there is a small delay with Google Hangouts. So I'm waiting a little bit here. Um, but I also have a question for you, and that is, what will be your first next step uh, with regards to your marketing message? Try to figure out, you don't have to share it on the chat box. If you want, please do so. Um, but you have been here with me for more than an hour, so what is it that you will take away and that you will use the next time that you bring your marketing message. Okay, questions. I'm, give you, I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, 
well, a minute here and then I'm going to drink a little bit of water and then I'm ready for your questions. Okay, um, I've got a first question here, and that is what if I combine two different businesses, styling and coaching? Um, yeah, there's another thing that I wanted to add, um, and that is that um, you can have more than one uh, marketing message and elevator pitch and that really depends on the on your target audience and what it is that you do so um I, sorry but i can't see your name uh here um unfortunately so i don't know who's, who's asked the question but um if you have okay hilda i see it now if you have two businesses um it really depends or you have two marketing message and really two businesses like for instance my hr vibe business is very different from my new brand bu uh, builder business even though there is somewhat of connection of course but it is very uh, very different so i have different marketing messages different websites different communications etc however if there is a com uh, if there is a link between the two businesses, if there is um, the golden thread, eh? There's, uh, the rode draad um, between them, then I would try to focus on the on that um, on that commonality. Um, I should, yeah, I should have some more information on that. Um, styling and coaching um, is that is it. For, are the target audiences the same? What are the, uh, I mean, I can imagine that with styling, you want to make people feel better and, and happier and prouder in life. And actually with the coaching, you might promise the same things. So that might be able to, you might be able to combine these, uh, those, these two. And then you could say, well, I help, for instance, women uh, feel happier and, 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 and more beautiful inside and outside and I uh, use two businesses to achieve that. On the one hand it's outside and it's a styling and on the other hand it's the inside and it's a coaching. So I'm just inventing your stuff. I don't know you uh, well enough or your business is well enough but that might for instance be a solution. The training, uh, how long will it be? Uh, that will be one day training. Oh, so one day training plus then there is this follow up a call. And it's from the, yeah, it's from the morning nine o'clock uh, until uh, at night uh, uh, five o'clock or something. Um, okay, uh, Hilde, yeah, that was your uh, question. I see. Um, I see somebody who says, um, I'm going to try to put everything in use, it's very good. Um, somebody says, uh, no questions, Walter says, no questions from my side, thanks for the clear presentation. Well, thank you very much, Walter, for uh, attending the presentation. Um, well, Hilde, yeah, you're uh, offering both uh, under your name one side. Um, that's that's good. I mean, then you have to find your uh, your the common the common theme actually, making people people feel good again on the outside and the inside, something like that. Which I should I should have uh, more. I should use more. Um, I have to have more information before. A, oh, my goodness, end of the day. Um, before being able to give you a very good answer on that, but I think we can make something out of it. Um, Chris says, uh, thank you very much. Bye bye. Um, thanks for the very, for the good overview and the clear steps to follow. Thank you, Dirk, for that. Um, 
Well, I don't think that there are a lot of questions anymore. Thank you, Hilda, for all your support and uh, the questions. Well, I hope to see you on my live day on December the 13th. It's actually a little bit out of, uh, well, it's a little bit different from what I'm used to do, but it's because I had so many questions with regards to the marketing message and to help people really craft it individually that I decided to make a one day, uh, the one day training. And apparently it's, 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 it is already a, a successful because the, the spots that are left, it's only three, three or four. So um, I'm happy with that. Okay, well, if that is all, then I'm gonna leave it there. I wish you a wonderful evening. No more Mr. Murphy. I hope that I'm getting my website back on track. And for now, enjoy your evening and have sweet dreams tonight. Bye.